It was really no different with the Camaro. Some of its engineering features and styling notions can be traced back through the years. But the basic idea to build this unique car came in early 1964. Of course, discussions had gone on much before that date. This is Mr. Don McPherson, chief engineer, passenger car, Chevrolet. It's not quite as simple as somebody in research and development gazing out the window and saying, we need a new sporty four-passenger car. Nor is it a matter of an artist setting a line down on a sketch pad. This is Mr. Dave Holes, group chief designer, Chevrolet. It does start with a little crystal gazing, but the crystal ball of the Chevrolet team is made up of market studies, surveys, the response of the motoring public to current models, plus idea show cars, buying and spending patterns, and other such indicators of the future. In this respect, the public is partner to the automobile designer. When it became apparent that public interest was growing in a small, distinctive, sports personal car, an experimental project was launched to design a car to best fit that need. At first, it was known simply as the XP 836. Automobiles are designed around people. One of the first steps is to design a seating package. That's Oscar, sitting in for thousands of owners to be. The best seat height and seating angle are not just for Oscar's comfort, but to make him more efficient behind the wheel. Does he have ample leg room, hip room, shoulder room, and head room? These are important questions to be answered. How well can he see in front, at the sides, and in the rear? As the basic seating package takes shape, exterior styling begins. Initially, stylists are given free reign. Each stylist interpretation is considered. Eventually, a styling concept begins to emerge. The byword becomes, don't just try to be different, try to be right. Come up with an honest look, clean, sleek, no tinsel or gingerbread, nothing contrived, a direct approach to design that will be in style for years. Look right in any setting and have its own distinct personality. While one group works on exterior design, another concentrates on interiors. Appearance inside must be in keeping with appearance outside. Instruments must be clustered for quick reference, easy to read, nicely recessed and set against a black background to minimize glare. Controls located close at hand, no unnecessary reaching. Since function and appearance go hand in hand, engineers are in every step of the way. At first, it is dream engineering. The dream, a car easy to steer, easy to maneuver, easy to park with flat cornering, no excessive lean, and a design that adds up to safety. Eventually, dreams on paper evolve into one design. Still on paper, computers evaluate the engineering approach of the new car. Fed such basic information as the size of the car, its weight distribution, center of gravity, and wheelbase dimensions. The computer comes up with the best combination of such factors as roll axis, roll distribution, roll stiffness, ride rate, front end geometry, and so on. But skilled engineers must still come up with the right answers. A case in point, based on computer information, engineers came up with single leaf rear springs. Simple, practical, ideal for the characteristics of this particular design. This unique computer program is the first where the overall driving behavior of the car in motion is predicted on paper. Two-dimensional drawings must be translated into three-dimensional clay models. In the case of the XP 836, it is decided to go to a full-size clay mock-up. Styling is refined and the final package shape determined. At this point, the project gets the green light. It is to go into production. A new automobile is composed of new parts, thousands of them. Each part must be designed and perhaps redesigned several times. These men engineer parts seemingly out of nothing. Wood, clay, plastic, sometimes metal. Whatever material is best suited to their needs. Another use for computers is to produce prototype parts. Design information is fed into the computer 
which in turn operates a machine which produces the part. Any changes are programmed into the computer and incorporated into the finished product. While this is going on, mock-ups of parts and components are fitted into a wooden framework of the F-car. Meanwhile, actual components are studied. Will they go together properly? Will they work together? Concealed in the familiar bodies of current models, these components are subjected to thousands upon thousands of driving miles, both on the proving grounds and around the country. Then, they are torn down and examined carefully. And they are subjected to exhaustive testing, sometimes put through millions of cycles, more than they will ever be called upon to operate during the life of the car. The last touches of styling and trim detail are considered on a full-scale fiberglass model. It won't run, but it looks enough like the real thing to fool an expert. Prototypes that do run are next on the schedule. Time for the showdown. Will the car live up to expectations? Again, the test miles pile up. Day and night, around the clock, rugged testing far exceeding the driving demands made on the average car. Electronic brains correlate the results of the tests. But human brains pass judgment. The results? The F car meets or exceeds all expectations. You know, here at Chevrolet Styling, we live and breathe new ideas. Take things pretty much in stride, and yet, this design captures everyone's imagination. To people sensitive to design, the Camaro is a good, honest piece of sculpture. From any angle, the car has a dynamic shape, the look of today, with no compromises and no excuses. It's quite a contrast from the flat or slab-sided look or the squared-off, boxy look. These aerodynamic lines were subjected to extensive tests in a jet aircraft wind tunnel. The Camaro is truly a product of the space age. It has what the stylists call roll under for a lean look. side glass and roof give it a lot of what we call tumble home. That slanted in feeling at the top. Tumble home and roll under are key design elements in the cylindrical shape of the car. A trend setting shape considered an ideal approach to modern automotive design. To the engineer, the beauty of the Camaro extends under the skin. This is Mr. Alex Mayer, director of engineering, oh, Chevrolet Motor Division. An interest in this car. We feel we have managed to incorporate the ideal of simplicity with the goal of the best possible engineering answer. Of course, the best answer was our primary concern, but often the simple answer proved best. Monoplate rear springs are a case in point. As the computer's prediction and subsequent road testing prove, single leaf rear springs are the best answer for this car. Simplicity, combined with excellent cornering and handling characteristics, reliability, and roadability. Another example is the single tubular propeller shaft. One piece, no extra U-joints needed. The engine, transmission, front suspension, brakes and steering gear and linkage are built as a unit. The front frame is secured to the body through four rubber isolated mounts, isolating the passenger compartment from engine and front suspension road noises. And of course, the rear suspension is rubber isolated too. It's the right approach for this car, the best of two approaches. Unitized construction at the rear and separate body and frame at the front. Here's something else. The wheels are set wide apart. It's what engineers call wide tread. While it gives the car that sports car look, it isn't done just for appearance sake. It's functional. A wide tread provides easier handling better control in turns and around corners. 
to lots of people. That's the whole point. We planned this car so that each buyer can tailor it to his individual taste. This is Mr. Bob Lund, Assistant General Sales Manager, Chevrolet. He doesn't have to buy special models and higher price series to get what he wants in his Camaro. One person, for instance, might want to dress up his Camaro with the style trim group. Still another person might favor the special interior group. Others might choose any one of a multitude of options and accessories. And some optional packages virtually give the buyer a different automobile. Look what happens when you add the Rally Sport option. Now the car takes on a whole new look. From full width grill with concealed headlights, through livelier bright work accent, to distinctive rear end treatment. Now if a buyer chooses the SS350 option with a 350 cubic inch V8, the car takes on a still different look. Special, wider, low profile tires on wider wheel rims, with more tread on the road for traction and handling suited to the high-performance powertrain. The look of performance on the outside is matched with extra-duty chassis components under the sheet metal. Unusual styling touches, a special raised hood line, a distinctive paint band around the front grille. Here, the SS350 option is coupled with the Rally Sport option but can be added to any Camaro with a 350 cubic inch V8. With this freedom of choice, the motorist builds the Camaro to fit his own needs, wants, and desires. In a manner of speaking, it's a do-it-yourself car. The type. Test driver Bob Cliff proved out with a production model Camaro. Watch him put it through its paces, far beyond highway limits which can only be done under safe, controlled, proving ground conditions. The Camaro story has no ending. It's just beginning. It really begins when you get behind the wheel.